Okay, so let's get into the materials now. Um, first, I'll add the material to the stem of the dandelion. So let's split our window here and make sure you're under Cycles Render. You can uh, switch over to Note Editor then and click New Material over here. And you'll see we have our uh, diffuse and material output. Um, and for this material, I'm going to be using uh, a glossy shader, turning the roughness value pretty much completely off, maybe a point. 002 just so you have a little bit of uh, roughness. Now shift A add a mix shader and put that in the two and now we can uh, set our color for this and why don't we switch over to uh, rendered viewport shading so we can see what our material is looking like. Um, maybe we should quick set up our sun lamp so we can have a better representation of what it's going to be looking like. So over here put your cursor and shift A add a lamp, sun lamp. And you can delete your uh, default spot there. Now we want to rotate it hitting double tap, double tapping R you can rotate it uh, freely. Go to side view, rotate it just so it's kind of like a late afternoon early morning sunlight and uh, to the strength way up to 20 or so and change the color to maybe a little yellow reddish all right now you can switch over to rendered viewport again and see what it's looking like okay that's looking a little bit better let's uh Let's um, add a few more uh, materials. Turn down the uh, amount of strength of the glossiness. And uh, let's add some translucency to it. So shift A, add a shader, translucent shader. And shift A, add, add shader and hook that up in there. We'll have to change the color of the translucent shader to be much darker green. Something something like that. And, uh, and one more thing, we want to change the size of our sun lamp up to uh, about three. Maybe, maybe two and a half. But um, in rendered viewport you can see you get that uh, cool looking stem now. Um, we need to turn on the glossy color as well just so it's not white but more of a lime green. So something like that's looking uh, looking okay. So you can tweak the settings but maybe make this a little less at 0.1. But yeah so that's looking okay for that. Now uh, let's add the material to the uh, to the bulb on top. So add new material. Um, for this material, I actually uh, used a texture. I'll uh, I'll include uh, links in the description for the textures. But um, I used a texture I found off Google. Um, this is just uh, right here, the close-up of the head of the dandelion. So open that, put that in there. But we'll have to uh, we'll have to unwrap our uh, our head. So um, go to top view and switch out of rendered viewport. Tab to edit mode. Just select one of these edges over here and Control E, mark seam. Now you can select all, hit U, unwrap, and that will uh, unwrap it for us. That should be good enough. So tab back out of edit mode. And now we have to uh, plug a vector value in here so it knows to use the UV map. So we're going to add a, uh, a input node, I believe it is, attribute. And hook the vector up to there and type in UV map. 
because that's the name of our uh, UV map right here. If you've changed this, you'll have to change that. So uh, with that done, we can uh, might want to tab into edit mode and switch over to UV image editor. And you can see we have our image there. Just kind of uh, scale it, maybe rotate it to fit nicely. You don't have to worry about the scene because that won't be facing the camera. So, um, yeah, something like that. And you can go into rendered viewport and see how that's looking on your, uh, on your uh, mesh. And that looks, um, I think that's okay. Maybe, uh, whoop. Maybe select it and uh, rotate a little bit more. Whoop, Manzi, rotate a little more. looking okay so yeah it's just something like that and I go back into uh, object mode select our mesh and uh, back into node editor and uh, we can add a few more uh, shaders to this uh, a glossy shader we uh, just want a little bit of glossiness because this is more of a uh, less of a glossy material and more of a natural rough material but I found a little bit was okay so Add a glossy and add a mix and uh, make the roughness like 0.1 or so so it's not uh, too sharp of a glossy shader. Then just turn the amount way down to uh, 0.02 or something. So you should get a little bit of that in there. And uh, we can also add some translucency. So add, uh, add shader and a translucency shader like before. Add uh, Translucent and plug it in the bottom. And again, you'll see it's completely white, but that's just because we need to uh, tone it down. But uh, for this, we want to um, add a color mix shader and connect it from the texture, mixing it with a just a black texture to uh, make it a much darker image. And then we hook that color up to the color of the translucent. Now we can control the amount with this factor value, reducing it down to a reasonable amount. And now I think our whole head is a little bright as well, so we can um, move these back a little bit and add, or just duplicate this mix shader over to our diffuse and um, mixing it with a black value, or yeah, mixing with a black value, you can darken it up a little bit. I think I'll just go with uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Looks okay. Um, also, if it's a little bit too bright of, like, I think uh, I think those those uh, red spots look a little <laughs> sick, <laughs> you can add a uh, saturation and just desaturate a little bit. I think that looks maybe a little better. And now, the final step for this is adding a another mix shader, it's changing this one to multiply, and making this top color completely white, and hooking the color into the displacement, and grabbing your uh, final image texture there and putting it into the bottom. You can get displacement, and now we'll uh, you can see that's that's a really harsh displacement, but we uh, can tone that down with the factor value here. So just bring that down to a 0.1, maybe a 0 0.06. Just something that looks natural and not too hideous. <laughs> All right, so now um, that's good for, uh, that's good for now. So let's uh, do our dead leaves here. We want to switch back into our no uh, UV image editor because we have to do some unwrapping for this um, and switch back into solid view. So for this, I'm going to, um, um, well, let's just see what, whoop, wrong key, Manzi. Let's just see what unwrapping gives it right now. All right, we don't have to do any seams on this. All we have to do is unwrap. Um, and the texture I'll be using is one I got off CG textures. It, uh, I'll again include a link in the description for you guys but um, 
this texture could really be uh, anything you'd like. I used um, some tropical foliage that was kind of dirty looking. And um, so just kind of move this to the side and selecting our uh, each individual leaf like so. We can uh, hit, I believe it is Y and then grab. Hang on, we uh we can go to our UVs and find which one select unlink selection, I believe. No, split selection. Y, yeah. You hit Y and then you can No, that's still not working. You uh hang on here. Image select Unlink selection. Alt. No. Which which is it? Try and find which one uh, unlinks it. I thought it was Y, but it doesn't seem to be working. Hang on, and I'll find uh, I'll find the key for that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I was correct. You hit Y, and now you can uh, unlink that selection from your uh, your um, UV map. So now we just want to do this for each individual one, um, unlinking it and grabbing it and placing it over one of these uh, one of these leaves. So this is a little bit time consuming, you might want to give yourself a little more space to work. But um, I found this just gave me the best result in the end. I also switched over to, uh, down here, um, face select mode. That might uh, make it easier for you. But just hit Y, and then you can grab it and move it away. Just You can even put the uh, same UV maps on top of each other because you won't be seeing both of them at the same time ever. But um, if you go over to uh, object mode and textured, you can see if we add a new material to that and make it a, a image texture. Selecting that, we can uh, we can see what we're doing here better. I think so. Just selecting, uh, you can hit C. And do that too. Might be easier to select your uh, leaves and hit U. I mean Y, <laughs> and uh, unselect that. And I tended to use the ones towards the bottom of this vine because they just seemed a little bit more worn and dirty, like the rain had kind of beaten them down. But um, well, just double tapping R to uh, rotate that. But don't think I want to do that. So yeah, you can also um, enable proportional editing by hitting O and kind of move your vertices around that way is a little quicker. So just to get your uh, your leaves completely on the uh, on the foliage. So yeah, we have a uh, handful of these to do, but it goes. It goes fairly fast once you get used to doing it. Whoop. Command Z. Y. Okay, come on. Let go. Y. Just like that face too. Y. Oh, come on. Maybe it's... Oh, I got proportional editing enabled. I turn that off. When you, uh... When you unconnect them. So, yeah, just, uh... Just quick do this. I'm just doing it pretty uh, quick and dirty for the sake of this tutorial, but you can spend as much time perfecting your UV map as you wish. Um, just kind of want to keep it on the flowers, on the, uh, not flowers, foliage. So, so 
Block that. Y. Pull it away. And rotate and scale it down over one of your uh, leaves. You can see that's it's looking okay. Some of these darker ones are a little too dark, I think. Might want to move them up a little bit on the vine. But we have a few left here to do, so just deselect using the middle mouse button. Y. Grab it. And go put this one. Go put this one along. That's fine here. You want to, uh, if you don't have just one side viewing the camera, you'll probably want to spend more time getting a high quality leaf on the one facing the camera. But um, it also depends on how close up your shot is going to be, like I said before, to uh, you want you know the most high quality textures and stuff for that. You'll want to download this texture I have here in, uh, in the highest quality you can off CG textures so you uh, get the most detail out of your leaves but I'm just doing this quick and dirty right now as you can see just a few more here selecting that hitting Y pulling it away and rotating You can even do a few at a time if you want. Like I'll do this one and this one. Why? Grab them away. And then I'll just deselect um, this one. Grab this one. Rotate it and just place it with this one. Just scale this one down a little bit. And now I can just select both these, like so, and place these over a uh, leaf somewhere. As long as these aren't right next to each other, you'll never be able to notice it's the uh, it's the same leaf. So place that over there. Scale down a little bit. Scale down. Rotate. Oh, command Z. Rotate. All right. And uh, grab this one. Why? Whoop. Why? Sorry if you heard that in the background. Uh, a different computer being used. So yeah, this one can go right here. Scale it down. Place it right there. And this last one here I can just select and oh I'll just put this one uh, on top of this one here, scale, rotate, place on right there. It's pretty good. All right, so you want a quick uh, run over your leaves and check that they look half decent. But um, from front view, it's okay. You might want to tweak some of yours, but I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the UV mapping. Um, save your texture and go to uh, your node editor. And you want to add a, another um, input attribute node. And again, just type in UV map, like so. I'm going to connect the vector up. Now, um, we can do a slight glossiness on the leaves too, but since they're dead, you obviously don't want uh, too much. So just uh, glossy mix and we'll make it pretty rough so it's not a sharp reflection but more of overall and um, let's go to uh, turn this way down oh, like a 0 0.05 and switch over to rendered viewport so we can see what's this looking like um, that's looking okay Evie. You know, in your environment textures, you want to click and use nodes and then just make it darker for now. Turn the strength down on that. 
just so we're not to uh, make it a blue for now. We'll be adding an HDR map in a little bit, but all right. So um, that looks okay. Let's add our uh, little bit of translucency to that as well. So add an add shader, place it in there, and add a shader translucent. And hook this up to that. And then again, you want to uh, add a color mix, mix the original image with some black to darken the translucency. And then just add some. You can do. Um, you might want to have the black on top. Like so. And then you should be able to see more and less. Um, I think we'll just leave this at like a point two. Okay. And um that's not looking too bad. Why don't we also add a displacement? So just duplicate our mix node here, make the top value white. Switch it from mix to multiply and select the image, put it at the bottom, select the output and put it into the displacement. And turn this way down like 0 0.05. E that's too much still. 0 0.01. Um that might be okay. It looks like our glossy shader is still too much. So uh, why don't we make the glossiness a little lime green, so it's not white, and uh, make our mix factor is a point zero two. Maybe a little less white on that. It's looking pretty green right now, but um, looks like our textures might be a little bright. So um, moving, but we will can duplicate this texture and put it into our uh, diffuse and darken it if we want all the way up to that. But uh, let's do 0.2 or so. And then why don't we select the color of our glossy and that might work. Just take it out of the, take it out of the image texture. Um, Okay, so we'll leave that that. We might tweak that later. But um, yeah, let's get on to the seed. So for the seed, we'll start with our uh, base there. And um, I don't know if we have to unwrap it. Let's just start uh, by adding a new material to it and um, adding an image texture. Um, texture, image texture. This texture is another CG texture. Um, it actually has nothing to do with dandelions. It's a uh, it's a uh, Ivy Ivy eighty six here. The reason I took this is let me bring up uh, a reference images. Is you can see it kind of has these uh, like strands going through it, almost like a wood texture. But um, found this looked okay. Um, this into the color if we switch over to rendered viewport here. Um, we want to tab uh, here. Let me go into solid view, just you uh, cylinder projection. So, doing a quick UV unwrap there with a cylinder, cylinder, <laughs> cylinder projection. Um, no, why don't we just uh, do it the hard way and unwrap it. So the side that's not facing the camera again, you want to just select one of these and control E, mark seam, select all, you unwrap. And uh, if we go to our, if we go to our UV image editor and tab it edit mode, select it, you can see our vine texture there. It's just all kinds of like veins almost like. And if we uh, switch to textured viewport here, we can see what it's looking like on there. And you just kind of want to scale in along the X, I believe. 
or maybe scale along the X. Yes. So, um, so this way as you get these like veins running through it, we will find, but find that look cool. So, um, you might just want to scale it up a little more. Something like that should work. So, um, now to adjust the color of it slightly, I added a color mix and put the uh, top color as sort of the orangey, browny type look of the of the uh, seed. So something like that, and then just if we switch over to rendered, we can just tweak this to whatever satisfies us. It still looks uh, too bright. If we adjust the roughness on this, doesn't change much. Why don't we darken our texture here just a little bit, a little more like a, a seed, and then we can add a little bit of bump mapping as well. So just uh, mix, multiply, white, and the displace. Take the color mix out of there. Pop that in there. So you can kind of get what I'm looking at with a little bit of just 0 0.05 maybe. Uh, 0 0.02. 0 0.02. So that's looking uh, that's looking okay. Now for the stem here, this will also have to be uh, unwrapped because I did a gradient on it to uh, just select one of those. Control E, mark same. Yeah, I did a uh, you unwrap. I did a gradient on this, varying from a darker brown up to a lighter color up here. So uh, in order to do that, I had to unwrap it. So um, let's go to our UV image editor, and you can see it's good. It's unwrapped along the uh, the horizontal axis ways. So that's what I want. So back into our node editor, we can add new material, and um, we we'll want to add a color vector converter color ramp and uh, hook that up to the color and if we go to rendered so we can see what this will be looking like we uh, can we'll just just to make sure we got this map right we'll go a bright red on the uh, one and a dark blue on the other and right now you can see it's not it's not mapping it properly so, yeah, right now it's using this factor value as uh, the mix, and that doesn't that doesn't work. So, um, why don't we add a input attribute? So it's using our UV map, and I don't know if we can hook the vector up to the factor. Maybe the factor up to the factor. All right, now you can see it's working. You hook the factor up to the factor of the attribute, and you can see that the uh, it's working properly. So we want uh, we want the blue area to be more of a brown color. So we can um, almost just use our eyedropper and kind of select a uh, brown color down there, and then the red we want to be more of a light seed type color so make that brighter up there and then you can kind of tweak it still with this this is a little too dark I think so just brighten that up a little bit make it a little less harsh so you can kind of see that uh, that seed like look to that um, I think that's really all you have to do you could add a little bit more detail to this with translucent and whatnot but I think that looks okay so um, I'll move on to the strand rendering. So um, the strand rendering, we want to, uh, you have to make sure that you're not using your GPU. So under uh, your render settings, change the GPU to the CPU. So you can actually start rendering it. And then um, you want to select your uh, little 
a little thing up there and add a new material. Now if we go to rendered, you should be able to see, nope, we have to, uh, right to solid. We have to enable cycle strand rendering. So under your uh, particle system, you should be able to just collapse some of these things. Hmm, I'm not seeing it today. Disabled that. Switch to experimental. Okay, you have to switch to experimental feature set. But then you can adjust your cycle strand rendering. We'll leave the uh, mode at true normal. And the shape, um, if we go to rendered, we can see it's rendering. Um, the shape I found was best at like a 0 0.3. Just, you can see by adjusting this that uh, it gets thinner at the end. And if I go the other direction, it gets fatter towards the end. But uh, I want just a 0 0.3 for this. And uh, close tip, I just gotta make the root a uh, very small number. Um, not that small. Uh, 0 0.01. Why don't we turn our uh, our render sampling, turn the preview render up to 100 so you can get more, uh, both of them up to 100 so we can get more rendering going on. Um, that's looking pretty good. Why don't we uh, tweak our settings here now? We'll add a uh, a glossy shader and make this one uh, appear white and make this one just a little bit more of a gray because uh, oh not black gray. If this was pure white as well, the glossy would obviously not show as anything. So. Uh, We'll just make that a little darker and add a color um, shader, mix shader. Pop that in there and connect the bottom one up. And you can see you're getting some uh, glossiness in uh, on it. Now um, let's also add a translucent shader for the hair so the light can go through it. So uh, add a add shader and add a shader translucent. Connect that to the bottom. And now this will make it completely white. So you might want to uh, darken your translucent value a little bit so you're still seeing that glossy shader. But um, yeah, that's basically it for the uh, strand rendering there. That looks uh, pretty good, I think. Now, uh, I also haven't showed you guys I didn't do this earlier, but um, go to solid view. I didn't. I added, um, like I said in the beginning, those little spikies on the seat here. Let's do that now. Um, so we'll have to quick make a uh, weight paint uh, vertex group. So new vertex group, and make it add, and have the strength fairly low. Now these would just more around the top here. I'll show you that. Uh, that reference image again, right here, you can see where you get that like pokey stuff at the uh, base of the seed. So just adding a vertex group with uh, the intensity towards the top, you can uh, go into object, object mode and add a quick particle system here. We don't have to do any dynamics on this, so you don't have to worry about the dynamics on this one. And turn the velocity way down, just so it's very short. 0.0012 and change the vertex group over to the one we made and also you can change the amount down to just like 60 or so and then change the emitter not that value not that one along with Z to be pointing upward so you might want to make this lower number a little lower make this one a point zero zero one just so it's kind of pointing the right direction. Or maybe add just a little bit of, well, a very little bit of random. Even less, 0 0.0001. And we can play with the shape now. I want this to be very triangular shaped, so if we go to rendered, you can see what we're getting. And uh, why don't we make the shape, why don't we change this to like a one, see what we get. 
well it's it's very small I want to make the uh, the root bigger you can kind of see what I'm getting here make the root more like a maybe a three something like that and why don't we make our uh, emitter settings a little bit larger so make that point zero one five make this point zero one five kinda like that um, you might not want it to be quite so pointy so maybe you take the shape but uh, let's try negative point five whoa yeah that's not too bad make the root a little bigger and we can make the size much smaller now but that's more of the shape I'm looking for so change that back down to 0001 and make this one 0001 and that's too small so you can see this is just a little bit of trial and error but tweaking tweaking the values to get something you're happy with Zero 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 two. Um, maybe a little less shape. Just a little bit of fiddling with this to get what you're happy with. Something. Let me make this four. All right, that's okay. Um, it's a little bit large still. You might want to make this point zero four. But that's pretty good. Um, why don't we? Eh, zoom out. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so let's uh, let's call that good. And I think that's that's it for the materials. Why don't we uh, move on to rendering our final scene now? All right, so let's uh, add our HDR map. Um, you want to change it from uh, here. You want to change it to environment texture. Open again. I'll uh, try to keep a link to this in my description, but under uh, this is just a, uh, a grass field um, texture I have. Um, so HDR map. Now if you go to rendered, you can see the texture map. Um, you're going to want it to be uh, very low, not too bright a background, just like a point two. And with your HDR map now you might have to tweak some of your uh, original settings but um, all right let's snap our camera to uh, where we want it somewhere around here so to do this control alt zero and you snap your camera to the view now what I did for my shot was zoomed out and added a, a whole lot of focal length like it was a telephoto lens or something so I had like 250 or so maybe even more uh, 300 so it's a very very uh, zoomed in shot but uh, it seems like we can tweak a few of our settings now um, and if you have a, uh, a texture that's kind of bugging like I don't like this black maybe I'll make my focal length a little larger uh, 350 I don't like this black uh, black leaf right here um, you can I'll go back to uh, Solid view. Oh, sorry about that. All right, I'll go back to um, I'll go back to my UV image editor. Select the texture tab, and um, I can just select this one here. Let's see, select that one, and uh, okay, I can see that it's this one here. So I'll just select all of them now. And this one here is the one that's right next to the camera, so it should probably be in a better spot. So maybe I'll just put it over this one over here. Rotate, or maybe I'll scale it out a little longer along the Y. And then rotate and place it in there. You can kind of tweak it then a little bit as well. But um, yeah, so now when you go into rendered view, I think that looks a little better. You can see that this texture is a little low quality for close up. You might want to uh, find a higher quality texture or download a higher quality one. Um, I'm also going to tweak my vine here, my stem. If 
first. I think it's a little bit large, so go into edit mode, select the top one, option scale, just scale it down slightly. All right. All right, that's that. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. Um, I wanna tweak the material on that real quick. Um, make it a little bit more glossy. So um, switch this over to rendered viewport and just turn the glossy up a little bit maybe. See how that looks. Turn the translucency color up a little bit too. And that's looking not too bad. Um, maybe brighten this glossy texture up a little bit. Yeah. Have that be a little bit more white. So that's not too bad. Um, okay. That's, that's not... Let me see. Hmm. I'm not real pleased with that yet. Why don't we uh, select our sun lamp up here. Sun. Go to zero. And see if we can't... If changing this can't give me more of the result I'm looking for. Um, okay, that's what I, I had this checked in mind. Multiple important sample. You want to check that, and that will give you that uh, glossy shader looking a lot better there. So turn that back down to 2.5, and that's looking better. So um, yeah, that's not too bad. Um, maybe darken these textures a little bit here. But, yeah, um, and at this point, you know, it's just going to be your own personal taste and tweaking. Um, you might want to tab into edit mode and scale up this a little bit, just so it's not, not, uh, I don't know. It's all personal, personal preference. But, um, yeah, well, um, I think I'll, I think I'll just position my camera a little bit here. And, uh. One other thing, um, if you want to change the way your background is showing up, you see this is kind of just a black grass. You can, um, with the environment here and in the node editor, switch over down here to the world settings. And then you can shift A, add a, um, here, let me see. We want to add a mapping node and hook that up. And then also we gotta add a input texture coordinate generated. Select generated down to the vector. And you have your background there, but now we can tweak the rotation of it here. So well that's way too much. If you wanna get more of the horizon in the shot, and then you can change the rotation. I think I wanna change more of the Z rotation. You got some houses back there. Try to find some trees. Something. Uh, just kind of scrub through there until you find. Do you find something you like? Um, maybe go over here and move it up along the. Well, you know, hold shift, scrub a little slower. And fine tune it. So yeah, just like a horizon in the background or something. Um, hmm. That looks a little low quality. Five. Okay. All right. So that's not looking too bad. You might just want to continue tweaking uh, how you want your HDR map to be showing in the background. But um, yeah, let me zero these numbers out and. Try this again. Just move it up. Move it that way a little bit. Eh. You can use a number of uh, HDR maps for this as well, but um, I think I'll just use that tree over there and those clouds there. Move it up a little bit in there. Something like that is okay, I think. Um, I don't know, this is just going to be your personal preference, but I think I'll, uh, I think I'll go with that for now, 
and uh, um, you might just want to tweak a few things. You know, this I actually did a whole lot of tweaking to mine, but um, this is showing you guys the uh, basic uh, basic example, and you guys can take it from there. So um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I did a few compositing things to mine, but um, I think I might be a little bit too zoomed in too. Um, the HDR map looks a little low quality back there because I'm zoomed in a little too much, I believe. But all right, so uh, yeah, you can always use a higher quality HDR map back there too. But um, oh, one other thing to make it look more realistic is you can add some focal length to your lens by uh, chain enabling limits, going to top view. You can go back to solid view and uh, change the distance and get that uh, yellow bar there to line up with your uh, your item so something like that something like uh, oh, just kind of tweak this to get it. something like that looks pretty good um, and then you change the uh, f-stop I prefer uh, maybe six blades and 15 rotation and then you can just tweak this number I'll start at two and this will just blur your background image so it makes it look a lot more realistic and then you can move your camera a little bit to try and get a better angle on that rotate it double tap R to free rotate and yeah that's that's pretty much it guys um, I can uh, move to the side view and whoop, just jump out of rendered. It can be kind of hard to zoom in when you uh, move the camera inwards when you're uh, that much, but you have to remember you have to change the focal limits if you're going to move your camera. So just kind of pull it in for a little bit more of a close up and something like that. Looks pretty good. Maybe pull it in just a little more. Turn the focal length back a little bit. Move it in slightly more. Just to so get something like that. If you saw my animation, I actually animated the uh, the focal length a little bit um, to make it look like uh, it went out of focus and went back into focus. But um, yeah, that's that's basically the process I used to create it. So just you can find a still in there that you like. And uh, I'll render this out and I'll uh, check back with the final result. Alright, so here's the final render. Um, it looks okay. It could uh, definitely use a little bit of love. But um, yeah, that was the, uh, the process I went through to uh, create my scene. Um, I also added a little bit of compositing with uh, vignette and such. And then also tweaked the colors with the color management here. I like to uh, just kind of... You can sometimes get some interesting results changing the gamma and uh, exposure, maybe lowering the gamma and upping the exposure or something. But um, but yeah, that was my uh, that was what I went through to uh, create my scene. So um, I hope you guys learned something. And um, the scene isn't as perfect as my final one, but that's because I spent uh, hours upon hours tweaking it. But um, yeah, um, that's it guys. I'd love to see your final results, so please post them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.